Welcome everyone to Winning in the Shadows. It's UFC 307. I'm Andy. That's Jim. Every fight breakdown on the card. Let's get right into it, Jim. Uh, it's not the fight we wanted. It's the fight we needed. It is Tim Means versus Court McGee. What in the holy hell is going on? <laughs> what kind of what kind of fight is this to start off the card? Um, I do want to I do want to get into this, but um, we do have to just we have to talk about Salt Lake City. Before you handicap, before you bet these fights, you have to understand we are at high altitude at Salt Lake City. And does that mean something? Oh, yes, it does. So, Jim, please explain why this is so important to understand. So we got uh, our worst PFL night ever was at Salt Lake City. And every single fight, uh, we're talking 35, 45 seconds into the fight, you can tell. That we have a problem here. <laughs> and they're sweating it's profusely. worse than Denver. Yet they're sweating I know, profusely. I don't know if it's in. the elevation mixed with the humidity or just the area itself, but it, it seems like Salt Lake is kind of pegged as the hardest cardio place to play. It's a fight. Um, compared to Denver or Mexico City, which are both, I believe, higher elevations, uh, it still seems like Salt Lake City, every time we go there for any card, there's an effect. So... You have to take this into account with um, finish props. Be very careful on your props this week because after two and a half minutes, we could see every single one of these tough fighters exhausted and you lose the pop in your punch when you are tired. And when you get two people that are tired, even if it's a dead under, these guys are going to hug and wrestle and lean on the cage and sweat on each other for another 15, uh, 20 minutes. It, it's just... Else- I would also add that submissions have were almost impossible at PFO. Once they started sweating that yeah. much, it was like, you're not glocking up anything. Mm-hmm. Um, it was really so, tough. Really yeah, tough. Yeah. Yeah. So just take that with a grain of salt. Uh, we're definitely going to look at fading fighters with bad cardio. So very, very important to understand that. All right, let's get into it. Tim Means, Court McGee, what's your take on this fight? Well, this is like, uh, I'm, I'm very glad that they're not putting these guys up against young killers later in their career. UFC is has done a pretty good job of pivoting off of doing this. They had a run there where they were putting the old guys against the young Lions and it wasn't going well. Uh, you know, Jim Miller read it off, rattled off however many wins um, in a row. So we got two older guys that are nearing the end of their careers. Uh, would I be shocked to see either of these guys hanging up after this fight? No, wouldn't shock me. Um, Skill set wise, I w- would you say that they both don't do anything special? Not anymore. Correct. Right, yeah. Yeah, they're just a very meat and potatoes strikers. Tim Means is still dangerous. Court McGee still has, from what we've seen, decent cardio, and his chin is not totally gone. There was a worry there that for a while that Court's chin was gone, and I think he showed us that he still has a little bit left in it. We won't give him a murderous power puncher. Um, you know that fight against Morono, I think, was a bit of an indictment on Morono. He looked. Absolutely horrible, horrible in that fight against McGee. And I think that's when we realized that Alex Morono is who he is. That was the old, you don't lay minus 300 on Alex Morono lesson. Yeah, we did. And we all had we to learn did it. And um, we cashed it, but it wasn't very good. Yeah, it was, it was sketchy. Confident. So I think Tim Means has a little bit more uh, firepower. Here's the thing. I think his chin is worse than Quartz. So I'm not going to be able to get here on a play. What I do well, on, a, on a side. What I do think is that after about two and a half, three minutes, these guys are going to be slowing this fight down and just making this a veteran decision performance. So I am very interested in this fight to go the distance. Other than that, I will not lay any kind of bet on either side of these guys. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Tim Means is almost minus 200 favorite, and you just can't bring yourself crazy. to do that. So, yeah, when he got knocked out in his last fight, it was very concerning because it was an uppercut, mm-hmm. and he just got flatlined, and we hadn't yeah. seen him, you know, get knocked out like that. So um, I'm with you. The overs are the way to go. This is going to be a theme for this card, overs, mm-hmm. great parlay pieces. If you love parlay pieces, a lot of these fights to start round two, it's going to be a good one. I think Means and McGee know what they're getting into with Salt Lake City. I don't see a fast pace to start off with. Uh, this fight to go the distance, or you know, even over two and a half, is probably the only way that I would play. I'm with you. Uh, there's don't bet on don't bet a side on this fight. It's, it's laughable. Um, 
I mean, we'll move on. Is this another fight where it's laughable to, to take a bet uh, on a side? OSP against Ryan Span. Ryan Span coming in as the big favorite. You doing anything with this one? What a weird situation this fight is. It is so odd. You have OSP, who <laughs> was not expecting to win his last fight by any means. Um, oh, was we weren't, when we weren't expecting him to win that no. fight either. <laughs> um, literally didn't even have a speech prepared or anything to say after the fight. They hand him the microphone and he's like, well, uh, yeah, I won. <laughs> That's about it. And he had flat out said that him and his team were prepared for that to be his last fight. He didn't want to tell anybody he was retiring, but that was going to be his retirement fight. And he gets a W. Okay. Why not walk away right there? Well, maybe they threw some money at him to face Ryan Spann. That's the only thing I can think of is that he's taking one more fight. Why not? Roll the dice. Get a paycheck. Ryan Spann. Is there a more frustrating fighter in the UFC than Ryan Spann? Is there anybody that you've seen with the skill set that this man has that can piss it away in a heartbeat in a fight? It, yeah, it, I don't think there is, man. Come up, it's hard to come up with one who's got who's got that level of and and talk about throwing us off the scent. Knocks out Reyes and he's oh I'm working out now. I wasn't training before, and we're like oh my gosh, it's all come together. It's all come together from Spain. Then he gets quickly submitted to Kirillov. Split decision to Anthony Smith. And I'm sorry, getting ground and pounded out, Goose Goff getting knocked out is just a horrific look. Uh, just a, a horrific look. I mean, Spain is minus 300. It's, he's the only I, – I can't, I can't take OSP to win another fight, but uh, – I'm not laying. Friends don't let friends lay minus three hundred on on Ryan Span. He's going to yeah. have more power, but I, I I'll tell you right now, OSP is probably going to have more volume. O, o, OSP threw a lot of strikes in that in that in that last mm-hmm. fight. In that last fight, um, Kennedy left the door open, and uh, if if the, if there is a fighter that can leave the door open, it is Ryan Span. Mm-hmm. That door is wide open. The fridge door is beeping, letting you know that the door is open. Uh, <laughs> like, I mean, I, I I can't I I can't even take an over in this one because I've I've just watched Span get finished in two of his last three. So yeah, this this is one I don't think you're you're banking on the elevation helping an over. I think it, that's going to end up leaning towards an under um, in some form or fashion. The only way you can attack this fight is in the prop market or the time props. That's it. The the money line you, you can't do the. the Unless you like OSP and you want to just ride with the fade of Ryan Span, you know if if I had to predict, here's the other thing: this fight was scheduled and then canceled as well, and it was yeah. canceled because OSP was sick or oh. something. I call bullshit on that. Um, I think that he doesn't even want this fight. I think they signed on it. I think he's having second thoughts about coming back for a second fight. So the fact that it ended on his side and that got rescheduled. Makes me lean towards Span, but look, if Ryan Span is going to win, how's he going to win this fight? He's probably going to knock out OSP. I don't think he's going to win a decision because he's going to get caught in something in round two or round three when he's gassed. He's going to get tired, right? Yeah. So if you like Span, I think you bet him by finish. If you like OSP, you can play him on the money line. Do what you will with this fight. It's ugly. It's dirty. We're going to get a retirement after this either way. I'm sure. So play it how you want to play it. I, I don't have any stake in this fight. You know, we have lots of theories on uh, over, over the years. Um, we had, we had a, you hit a great one. Uh, we do our live shows for Data White Contender Series and for UFC. So if you want to join us, uh, join us on the Winning in the Shadows YouTube channel. That's where we do uh, all of our live shows. Uh, one of our favorite theories has been fade the haircut theory. Uh, when mm-hmm. someone shows up with a really dumb, bad haircut, you fade them. It worked to perfection uh, Tuesday night on Contender Series. This may be the first time we have two theories on one fighter, and that is Carla Esparza, who is a fade the baby theory and a fade the retirement theory. Uh, we're getting a great price on Tisha Pennington, in my opinion. What do you like? I think the market's wrong. Yeah, it's flat out. They're not. They're, we talked about this. You, you got to find edges where they're not baked into the line. And those two things that we talked about, and you could say what you want about our theories, but that stuff's not baked into the line. They can't account for it. 
So unless they start catching on, uh, it's where you get your edge. And she already had her baby. She already announced her retirement. That is a massive amount of red flags. This fight is a rematch. Uh, Carla won the first one. But if you go back and you watch that fight, that's a Tisha Torres with very little defensive grappling. I mean, what was it, eternity ago? What was the year uh, for their fight? I mean, I mean it's, it's, it's almost just one of those things where do you even really... You I know, think you even... throw it out. I think you throw it out. Okay. It's it's that long ago. There's no way everybody can be the same. Um, Esparza looked absolutely horrible in her last fight. I think if you're looking at both of these fighters and seeing who's made improvements throughout their career, it's Tisha Pennington. It's not even a question. To me, Esparza is the same fighter from the Ultimate Fighter in 2018. So you talk about MMA passing people by. This is <clears throat> a prime example. Um, we really don't know about her physically and at this altitude as well. The emotions with the fade the baby theory, I, I don't believe that she is going to be, have that same vigor to be chasing takedowns for three rounds. So love Pennington in the spot. There is a little bit of resentment uh, going back to the ultimate. I don't know if you caught this. As far as I did. Uh, Carla was one of the flag waivers talking about Tisha being on PEDs. And, you know, Tisha stated that she's not mad about it, but she doesn't forget about it. It's the old, you know, I forgive, but I don't forget deal. So I think Tisha is going to put it on her here in rounds two and round three. And to be honest with you, in these retirement fights, I would not be shocked if we get a bit of a mercy stoppage uh, in the third but uh, Torres on the money line is, is most certainly the play. Or a panic. Yeah, um, I, I watched an interview with Esparza, and I got to tell you, physically, it, like, her face looks different. It, it, mm -hmm. it, it's very, very strange. So Esparza hasn't fought in, uh, what is it, almost two years. She had her baby last year, just flat out said, coming back for one last fight. I went back and watched this Zhang fight, and even two years ago, I know it's Wiley Zhang. I know it's you know kind of its own category. Man, Esparza couldn't get anything going. I mean, nothing. She got beat up pretty good. There was one little exchange where she had some top control, and Zhang quickly reversed that and just like it was a like you go back and look at her last two fights. She got mollywopped by Zhang, and then this horrific fight against Rose, like she gets the win, but that that goes down as one of the all-time worst mm -hmm. <laughs> fights in, in UFC history. So um, you got to go back to 2001 before, you know, she's had a real win and a lot's going on there. So um, the other thing is we faded Tisha Pennington in her last fight against Tabitha Ricci. She was a fade the baby theory. Mm -hmm. She was coming back with baby. And even though we get the cash, we were terrified because Pennington yeah. looked great. So she's got her first fight out of the way after coming back. Um, and she obviously is not coming back just to retire. She's coming back to, you know, make a run. I thought her cardio against uh, Ricci looked good. Grappling looked fine. Striking looked fine. Everything looked really good. I don't really see where Spars is going to have um, any of the advantage, especially with all the kind of the baggage that's coming with. So I'm with you 100%. Carla Sparza versus Tisha Pennington. It's Pennington all day. You're getting less than minus 200, which is right up our alley yeah. for, for these theories. Yeah. So uh, if you guys could real quick hit the like button, really helps the algorithm out. Just bink, hit the like button. Um, let's do a uh, cord as the name, as the, as the word of the day, cord, C O R D. If you don't have a hot take to leave in the comment section, just type the word cord. Uh, to help us out. Uh, everyone that's been doing that, I really, really appreciate You guys have no idea how much uh, that helps us out. It boosts the video and the algorithm, and it just, uh, you know, kind of lets us know that you appreciate uh, the job that we're doing. But also, do tell us what you like um, in this. We always like hearing what you guys are um, uh, are liking. I ran a poll about a fight later on in the card that we'll get to that's a, that, that pretty funny <laughs> result, so stay tuned for that. Alexander Hernandez and Austin Hubbard. I got to be honest, this one was the very first one that I circled as a fight to go the distance. What's your take on this one? Mm, I'm going to be on the opposite side here. Okay. Um, reason being is this. Hernandez on a full fight camp is different than the Hernandez short notice. This fight's been booked. He's known he's been fighting. He didn't have a canceled bout or anything like that. He's a bit of a head case, and he gets in his own brain when he has too much time to train and think 
Okay. That's well said. Okay. That is very well said about Alexander Hernandez. It, he's admitted it. He admitted it in his last fight. And said, yo, maybe I should take short notice fights. Well, why didn't you? <laughs> now you're back in full training camp. The guy's been bouncing around gyms. He left factory X. Um, this is at elevation again. And with Alex Hernandez, I don't think I've seen him dominantly win a third round in his entire career. So that right there gives me Austin Hubbard in the third. What happens in one and two is going to dictate this fight. Now, say what you will about Austin Hubbard. I don't think he's a world beater by any means. When we watched The Ultimate Fighter, he was actually one of our picks that could win the whole thing. Uh, made it to the finals, so we we're pretty close on that. Hasn't really looked fantastic in the UFC since, but the man used to train at Elevation. I'm not sure he's still there. I think he moved back home. But what that tells me right there is that he knows what it's like to grind and push at this altitude. Maybe not this altitude, but at altitude. Um, so the third I'm going to pencil in for Austin Hubbard. Now, Alex Hernandez, when things don't go his way, he crumbles. He is a Victoria Leonardo. If they're not going his way, he will gladly kind of shell up and just take the beating and, and get out of there. We've seen him fight through a couple, but um, – I just can't get on board with Alex Hernandez. I think that Hubbard is going to have a chance to get him out late. I don't hate the decision, um, but I think this is going to be Hubbard, man. I like Hubbard in this spot. I think he's going to get the jump on Hernandez late round two and, and squeak out round two and round three, definitely. Yeah, plus 140 on Hubbard. It might also be a nice live betting opportunity mm-hmm. if Hernandez gets off to a good quick start. Um, I like it go to the distance just because it's an Austin Hubbard fight. I mean – Figlak goes to decision, and we see him go to decision and ultimate fighter. He just, I mean, long list of fights um, going the distance. He's not that, I mean, you have to go all the way back to 2020 here where uh, Austin Hubbard sure. actually gets the finish. So, And that, that finish was when Max Rochelle couldn't get off the stool. Yeah, it was a little bit. I mean, like, it wasn't. Yeah. Was it a knockout? <laughs> no, no. Hernandez last three fights have gone the distance. Um, so I just think that uh, the the writing's on the wall in this one that it goes a while. Uh, I don't know. Start round one or start round two could be a really mm-hmm. nice parlay piece. I'm willing to go all in and just say it's going to go the distance on this one. Eor Pateria and Caesar Almeida. Um, I think that this is just the continuation of. The UFC punishing uh, Pteria <laughs> for what he did uh, to Rua. I, I I really have never seen anything like this. Uh, I've I've never seen them just constantly putting a guy out and setting him up to lose. Mm-hmm. Uh, so uh, Pteria fights Rua in Rua's last fight, wins, and does this ridiculous celebration. So they're like, ah, okay, you're gonna gloat uh, uh, against uh, an all timer. Why don't you fight Carlos Olberg here? Bang, knockout. Hey, uh, meet Mr. Rodolfo. Uh, bang, knockout. Then they give him this Robert Bierschak. Who was horrible. Hor- horrible. Horrible. Garbage, and what was there, 48 stoppages for low blows and all that stuff. Uh, and then um, they give him Michelle Pereira. <laughs> <laughs> They're not done with him, though. No. Let's give him Shara no. Magomedov. Uh, let's let him get kicked to the body 48 times. No, that fight gets canceled. Okay, Pateria's biggest weakness by far is cardio. Let's have him fight in Salt Lake City uh, against a kickboxer who's shown really good cardio. Um, this is just I just I've just thoroughly enjoyed myself betting against Materia. Yeah. I just it just feels like every time that they give him a fight, it's just some way for him to lose. Uh, and I just I laughed when I saw him on this card. I was like, they did they keep doing this to him. Um, it's just a fade Pateria. The whole UFC organization, the matchmakers are are out to get him. Um if this thing gets past two and a half minutes, he's done. Mm-hmm. He, he, he's done. He's got power for a couple minutes, and then it falls off the cliff. And then you got Cesar Almeida, um, who has performed nicely over his last three fights. Pulls the big upset on Contender Series. Does what he's supposed to do is fill his, uh, finish his Budka in his first fight. And then ever so slightly loses to Kopilov, where Kopilov mm-hmm. easily wins the first round. And then Almeida comes on strong and makes it really close. 
to me, this is Caesar Almeida all day. It's just the fade Pateria train. It's just mm -hmm. the, the, like rinse and repeat. What do you think? Well, I, I didn't agree with the split against. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, Copy love. Off. But he did have a good showing in that fight. So I don't want to take too much away from it. Um, you know, he did go to decision with Roman Copy love who engaged in wrestling and, you know, Almeida was able to counter wrestle, which was very good to see. Uh, I, I, but I did think that it was a, a, a landslide for, for copy law. Pateria just, man, man. It's like when he wins, they make it worse. They're like, oh, you got to win. Okay. Here's Let's see if you can win now. It's, Here's it's, exactly. it's, it's crazy. Uh, I don't think he's going to have the cardio to withstand at all in this fight. Almeida is so good at standing. And also, do you think that Pateria has the wrestling to threaten Almeida? Because I don't think he's got a shot in the world of even getting this to the ground. So if we're going to be stuck with a kickboxing match, yeah, I'm going to take the K1 striker against Ihor Pateria. Not rocket science there. Yeah, I think Almeida finishes him at some point in this fight. I do not like this one to go the distance because Pateria could fall off a cliff. That's no, he something. is going to fall off a cliff. <laughs> if, if he doesn't get the first round, and I, I don't even mean like the first round. I mean like the first few minutes of the sure. first round. This is just Almeida is just going to pull ahead and pull ahead, and I wouldn't be surprised if Pateria just throws in the towel, um, gives up, takes a knee. So uh, Almeida, and you could even lower the odds by taking Almeida by KO. Um, you could even do the double chance and do Almeida by KO or, or decision. Um, don't we, don't sleep on the submission. You know we always say you you want to be oh, if you're on, to take Caesar them by Almeida? finish. Caesar when you Almeida's get guys that gas out, he's not, he's not they look for a him. way out and they stick their head in places they shouldn't. He's not he's not submitting him. He, he kicked. He, he fought he, Alex Pereira I three know. times in kickboxing. I this know. guy's not. This guy hasn't even thrown a submission attempt in his entire career. He's not submitting the uh, Pateria. <laughs> Um, <laughs> it's, it's I'm not, sticking to the rules. Sticking stop. to my rules. <laughs> yeah, I mean you're right. Our our rule is if you think a guy's gonna finish, you just take inside the distance. Like technically, Carlos Olberg has a submission on his record. So last night, everybody was. I saw all the Twitter feed. Torres Finney by submission. Had him in an arm triangle for what two minutes? Couldn't get the submission. Fight ends by KO. That you don't know. You don't know. <laughs> Well, that was ridiculous if you played that. that. If, you, if you played Finney just by submission and took out the KO, uh, that's on you. Uh, Marina Rodriguez and Yasmin Lucindo, I'm interested in your take on this one. What do you think? Me too. We haven't spoke about this fight at all. Um, I don't know what to make of Marina Rodriguez, man. I mean, uh, talk about being a stone's throw away from a title shot. And it just has not been good since. It has not. When your only win is against Michelle Waters and Gomez in your last three, that's a really bad look. Granted, they're against some damn good fighters. Uh, but look, you were billed as the next big thing here. You were going to be fighting for the title. Uh, that win over Yan was that was the moment that everybody started talking about her. Um, you know, she stuffs Mackenzie Dern out of there. Like, the, the finish against Gomez. That was so obvious a minute into the fight that Gomez was just beat, done. It was a mercy stoppage in round two. Like, it just not to take anymore. <clears throat> if you're going to be considered legit, I don't think you can lose a split decision for Jessica Andrade in 2024. So I really don't know what to do. On the flip side, I don't know if Lucendo is as good as we think she is. Um, I think everybody kind of thought she was going to be this murderous power puncher coming in she's looked great i don't i think she wins this fight because i just can't see marina landing the bigger shots out of the two of them my worry is how do you play it is it her by decision or her by knockout because that rodriguez chin could show up at any time and you just don't know so i'm really interested in your take on this i'm gonna pick lucendo uh, just because I think she's going to have the more impactful strikes, but I'm curious about how to play her. Yeah, you know, Lucindo at the time of recording this is minus 180, and I mean, this is just the the 
the young and up and comer versus the the veteran. And does the veteran have anything left in the tank? So uh, Marina Rodriguez's path to victory is she, she just has to use the jab, and mm-hmm. she has to keep Lucindo at distance. That's her only chance. My my issue is that. I just don't think it's going to do enough damage. And Lucindo's punches just have more oomph on them. And they, they end up damaging the face more. Um, you know, you look at Rodriguez, there's no shame in losing to Andrade and Lemos and Jandaroba. Um, this fight against Andrade, I, I, I thought Andrade, I was on Andrade pretty confidently, and it, you know, it went to a split decision. Um, her reach is going to be her biggest weapon. I just don't think it's quite going to be enough. Now, the worry is that you do have Lucindo who's still in her early 20s. Mm-hmm. That being said, she's got 21 fights. So is she, is she going to, like, drop the ball? But you got to remember, she technically lost her very first UFC fight. She's already tasted defeat. She's got that yeah. out of the way. Um, so when I'm going through her and I'm trying to find holes in her game, she's got a submission win. Um, I was high on uh, – Okay, but still kind of, still kind of am. But man, Lucindo just beat her up. I, I mean, mm-hmm. she put it on Carolina, and I see her just only getting better. And I'm not sure 37 year old Marina Rodriguez is going to have any new tricks. So what's what's her old tricks? Well, it's the jab. It's the you know, it's it's you know, keeping her at bay. But I just think Lucindo, uh, you give me the younger fighter that's shown power and has more upside at this point. That's kind of the only way um, that I can take it. Uh, the books have completely sniffed out the totals in this one. Uh, I mean, I wanted to take it to go the distance. You got to lay like minus 270 or something. That's That was going to be how I wanted to play it, but mm. it's a parlay piece at best. Um, I still think it goes it goes the distance. It's, but It's all about Marina's chin. That's what it's yeah. going to That whole bet, it comes down to that. If Agreed. she gets flipped... Could be over. <laughs> yeah, yes. Yeah, so I don't want to play Lucindo by by decision, even though I mm-hmm. do think I do think she wins by decision. You gotta take into account Salt Lake City. So mm-hmm. outside of the first round, we just watch, you know, these fighters gas out. So I it's Lucindo by decision. Um but that being said, minus one eighty is not that bad of a price. It's absolutely playable, especially if you want to throw some long shot or, or yeah, you know, if some you real... like Lucindo, you can just play a straight on the money line. Um, yeah, yeah. So are we so, both saying this? In this? Yeah, I, I just can't get there with Rod. I just can't get there with Rodriguez. I know she made it close against Andrade, but I just I have to take the upside. I have to mm-hmm. take the younger and the upside when you're looking at these fights. So um, that's going to be the play. Um, all right, we've got some underdogs that I think could be barking coming up here. Stephen Thompson and Buckley. Uh, you think Thompson's got a chance in this one? Hmm, it's the age. The okay. age bothers me, and the karate style bothers me. Uh, we just saw last night a fighter adapt a karate background properly to MMA. Boy, it looked and good. David Martinez, Martinez looked on fantastic. Yeah. And he kept the karate style but had a better defensive guard and defensive movement. And with Wonder Boy, it's like the book has been written on how to beat him. Uh, this happened with Machida. The second somebody exposed how to beat him, everybody did the same thing. And that's how you beat these guys. So the question to me in this fight, is Buckley going to be able to get on the inside? That's all this comes down to. If he can't get on the inside, Stephen Thompson is 100% live to win a decision 10 fights out of 10. If you're not going to close the distance on him, and at least threaten with wrestling, you're in trouble. So that's my question. Do you think Buckley is going to mix in the wrestling? Is he going to get on the inside? Is he going to be defensively responsible, which we've seen him be recently, getting inside and not get clipped? I don't think there's any knockout power coming from Wonderboy anymore. He's not going to be clipping anybody coming in and, and putting them out. So it's going to take a decision. So I'm in the camp of I think Buckley can do enough in these later rounds to really be a pest to Steven Thompson and make this fight dirty. And I think he's going to squeak out a decision. Wonder boy is still very hard to finish. 
You know, it's happened what once, right? The last fight was the last time. The only time that he's been finished. So uh, I think Buckley fights a smart game plan against a decision. Man. I think this sets up perfect for Stephen Thompson to win and for everyone to be holding Joaquin Buckley wow. in there. I I think I think this is the the parlay buster of the night. I think okay. that this is just everyone pencils this in. Old man Thompson. Uh, all it's gonna take is for Buckley to get inside. Uh, Stephen Thompson almost made it to round three against mm-hmm. Shavkat. Mm-hmm. Against Shavkat, and with all due respect to Buckley, he ain't Shavkat. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's take a look at who Steven Thompson has lost to in his last three fights. Shavkat, uh, champion contender. Bilal, champion. And 2021, Gilbert Burns, uh, mm-hmm. champion contender. Um, Buckley's not a champion contender, in my opinion. Um, so if I'm looking at who, who, who Stephen Wonderboy Thompson has, has, you know, lost to, it's the cream of the crop. And then... Listen, Kevin Holland just said, I'm not going to grapple. I want to try and mm-hmm. win a, a win a striking match. And look what happened. He couldn't, yeah. even, he couldn't even make it the entire fight. So now I look at Buckley, and there's two things that I just don't think people are taking into consideration. This is a, not the apex. This is a big octagon. Great point. Great point. I, See, I didn't even this, think of that. Great point. Steven Thompson's going to be dancing around on the outside so much. And now, yeah. add to that, it's in Salt Lake City. I think Steven Thompson's going to make Buckley run in circles and tire him yeah. out. And if he shoots for a couple takedowns and misses, oh boy, look out. Um, let's take a look at Buckley, who's been fantastic since the weight division uh, change. Knocks out Fialo. Fialo's getting knocked out in uh, oh, regional yeah. promotions now. Uh, Morono, <laughs> he couldn't finish Morono. Uh, which we documented earlier how bad Roroto is. Uh, Luke, who, what, that was like Luke not like being at his worst. And then Ruza Boyev, who Ruza Boyev just stood there and let Buckley take him down. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, don't, do not, this is not going to surprise me the second, or, or this is not going to surprise me the slightest. If round three, Buckley is huffing and puffing, covered in sweat, and Stephen Thompson. It's 1-1, and Thompson looks like the absolute fresher fighter, and mm. Buckley is like, oh, my God, I just blew my gas tank trying to take this guy down, and I didn't get it. I, I love Thompson by decision in this one. The lo- the, the big the, the big cage and that's, add- that's That's the best thing that you said, man. <laughs> the big cage. I like might have we, to flip on this. We, we watched <laughs> this at bare knuckle. <laughs> yeah. At bare knuckle, when they're in the small <laughs> – circle mm-hmm. it's just knockout central when they're a big one it's a room to move around on the outside i this is a this was such a sneaky fight for thompson to take i i i 100 believe that he was like oh yeah a big cage at altitude that i could dance around on the outside and point fight this guy because buckley loves to lunge in mm-hmm. uses athleticism i just this is i think this is gonna trip people up i really do this I is like my parlay point. buster um of the night you've been warned <laughs> uh, <laughs> friends don't uh, like friends better bet on buckley at altitude no <laughs> think of his style he, he yeah. like it's big explosions of energy i think this sets up great for thompson so uh all right roman deletes like kevin holland uh listen you pegged holland beautifully in his last fight uh mm-hmm. do you got any strong uh opinions on him in this one not on kevin per se um i think this is just mismatches in both guys' worlds. This is everything I want in a fight not to go the distance. Uh, if this stays standing, Kevin Holland is going to beat the ever-loving crap out of Roman. Roman striking has looked atrocious. Absolutely atrocious. It is big, winging shots, lumbering, cardio-zapping, at-altitude shots. Uh, <laughs> when you swing and you hit air... It is way different than hitting something. When you swing and miss, and you ask anybody who's been a fighter or is a trainer, when you make somebody swing and miss, their cardio goes south. It is so demoralizing. Um, So I think he's going to swing and miss a lot. That being said, if he gets to Kevin Holland on the ground, I think Roman Delize is grappling when he has cardio. is some of the best in the UFC. The man is super dangerous. I just don't know if it's going to get there. 
We haven't seen his actual wrestling be able to get these fights down and keep them down. And I thought it was pretty alarming in his last fight how bad he looked late in the fight. Uh, one thing about Kevin Holland is, have we ever really seen Kevin Holland tired? Um, He looked pretty, I, I guess Paige, he didn't look great. They're kind of but towards the end, but was he tired? I don't know, I don't know if he was exhausted. No, like even not. when he got wrestled by uh, who was Stephen Stephen Thompson? I guess Stephen Thompson was when he was all beat, beat up, he beat the hell, yeah. Uh, but I think if it stays, if it stays a striking match, let me put it this way: if they stay on the feet and it's a stand up match, I don't see him getting tired from punching Roman in the face. Okay, okay, because I don't think he's going to be taking hits. So I had a great read on Kevin Hall, and this line's been staring at me. All week, I think Roman's going to get to him. Okay. I just, I, I think that he's going to end up somehow latching up a submission early. Now, this fight starts round two. I am all over Kevin Holland because I don't think that Roman's cardio is going to hold up. I don't care what kind of training he's doing. Yeah. Then, keep in mind, this is also, is this fight at middleweight? Yeah, it looks it's like. It's middleweight, right? Because um... Roman's been bouncing around weight classes. Yeah, who knows? I, I don't I, I don't know if it matters that much uh, for me. Uh, yeah, it's gonna be middleweight. Okay. Yeah, I I I have no strong opinions on this one. I I don't need to put any input in. I just know I if the leads they can clinch with Holland and keep him up against the fence and make it as boring as his last three fights are, then yeah, it's a problem. But you're right. If Holland can pick up the pace and it should be Holland's, but. I don't see how I can make a wager on this one. So uh, yeah, I'm not full disclosure. I'm not betting this fight. Right? No, no, no. So uh, this week's plays, guys. Um, two notable ones. First off, our UFC 307 pack is up. Uh, 19 to nine MMA run. This year's been very, very good. Uh, Bellator, PFL, UFC. We've cashed in all of them. So uh, we're really seeing that sport really well. And then college football. It's just been fantastic. We do one play a week in college football. We started this last season, 17-5 and five lifetime. We're 4-1 and one this season. That best bet is up. Uh, all those are at wagertalk.com. You can use the, the link there, wt.buzz slash al. But really encourage you guys to go grab those, UFC 307 pack. Um, if you want to uh, – it depends when you're watching this. Thursday, uh, if you want to get a three-day pass – That'll get you the uh, college football play as well as all the uh, UFC 307 plays. So Thursday or Friday, three-day pass gets you all of those as well as any NFL plays that we'll have. But those those two plays uh, are really what we're focusing on for this week. And uh, if you have not uh, joined the free Discord channel, please do that. Uh, it's a Winning in the Shadows Discord. Absolutely fantastic channel. It's not like most Discords where a bunch of people talking trash and nonsense it's people sharing really really good information really good live plays uh, we've got channels for just about every sport uh even guys doing well in baseball uh with some of those the cricket channel continues to keep on uh, running a phrase i never thought i would say uh the, the our cricket channel <laughs> so but the cricket department keeps cashing baby um mm -hmm. so uh join that it's a really great group of guys um these are for people that um really take their bankroll serious, that look at it like a business. Um, and so we're all helping each other get better. So I uh, encourage everyone to join that. All right, let's keep going here. Uh, Kayla Harrison and Ketlin Vieira, the line has exploded. I mean, it's it's unplayable by itself right now. It's Kayla Harrison, mm -hmm. like, minus a, a thousand. Um, do you have any groundbreaking, amazing hot takes on this fight? No, uh, this is probably the fight we can spend the shortest amount of time on. Uh, Kayla Harrison's going to win. Okay, I'm with <laughs> She's going to win however she decides to win is, is the, the trouble spot. You can't play her on the money line, so um, she could finish her. She could take her down once each round and sit on top for as long as she wants. Just Ketlin Vieira, you cannot get past getting reversed on the ground. By Panny, like you stated the other day, uh, she loses, I thought, pretty convincingly to Raquel. I didn't think mm -hmm. that was a split. I thought that was a classic Pennington. Um, she meets old Holly Holm. She meets old Misha Tate. I mean, this is a different beast that she's fighting. And when I say yeah. beast, I mean it literally. Kayla is a beast on the ground. Yeah. And, and you know, just as a side note, we were worried about Kayla at this weight class and coming into the UFC. I am totally off of that now. She has kept her weight down. She looks fantastic. 
Um, she's ready to rock, man. I know Holly is, you know, getting up there and her best days are behind her, but that was an ass whooping. Uh, that was that was the best I've seen mm-hmm. Kayla Harrison look. So I agree. Uh, it's Kayla Harrison. I, she, I think she, you could probably play her inside the distance. Like we said, so if you go back and watch the Panty Key and Zod fight, don't do that, by the way. That is an absolute waste of 24 minutes. Like, just don't do that. Uh, but in the third round, <laughs> Ketlin Vieira gets on top of Panty and Panty reverses her. It's like, if you're getting reversed in the third round by Panty Key and Zod, Kayla Harrison's going to have her way with you. So only worry, again, it's at altitude. Cardio. If Kayla yeah. gets a little tired, it's going to be tough to finish. Uh, but as far as control and uh, those judo throws, I think she has no problem. We, we, we spoke her last fight, something that we didn't talk about when Holly Holm was the fact that she's allowed to throw elbows now. Oh, that's, that's right. That, right? That was that was something that we didn't take into account because we were both saying, you know, Holly could upset her. But when she gets on top now, she can drop elbows. And she did. And they were vicious. They were great. <laughs> Absolutely vicious. They were great. Yeah. yeah it's, a, it's a great point. I completely forgot about that one. So. All right, Jose Aldo and Mario Batista. So I got a friend who um, he bets some NFL, but he's, he saves it up for certain situations. And the situation that he saves it up for is when a ton of people are betting one side and the line mm-hmm. doesn't move. Mm-hmm. I give you Jose Aldo and Mario Batista because I don't know one person that loves Mario Batista in this spot. Mm-hmm. And yet that line is just sitting there with Jose Aldo as the underdog, what gives? What gives here, Jim? I think that tells you everything you need to know. I, I'm, it's, I'm, it's it's very sharp because if you're if you're going through all your information and you're doing your research and you're just seeing pick after pick after pick on Jose Aldo and and don't think that these Jose Aldo picks aren't bets, by the way, because he is the dog. So people are betting it. Like yeah. there's there's bets coming in. Why isn't the line moving? That means that some pretty sharp people with deep pockets are uh, are on the Batista side. So again, I, I'm in the I, same boat. I like Aldo. I did too. I did <laughs> okay. too. I know. I know. No, I, know. I don't. What do you do? Um, it's, it's, it's really tough it, to decide here. It truly is enough to make me say, "Stay away." Mm-hmm. I, I have. We have seen this too many times, and we've lost too many bets. Benoit Saint Denis. Uh, where everyone is on one side and the line just is not reflecting, you know, the movement here. So, I, I mean, let's talk about Mario Batista. Let's make the case for Batista. Uh, here, here's what I can make the case for. Uh, Benito Lopez and Guido Gennetti, like, credit to him that he did exactly what he was supposed to do. Um, I believe Benito Lopez was the realtor, wasn't he? Uh, so, yes, he, yes. He submit, so he submitted the realtor and he submitted the old uh, Guido, mm-hmm. uh, uh, Kennedy. Um, th- this fight against Blackshaw was very, very strange because it was a very short notice fight yes. um, that Blackshear took. Uh, I believe that was like one week after he won by Twister. Mm-hmm. And so like Batista looked a little frustrated. He'd been planning on f- fighting Cody Garbrandt. Um, his fight against Ricky Simone was that was his best performance by far. Uh, he neutralized the chain wrestling of Simone, landed a lot of damage on Simone. My problem is Bautista got touched up quite a bit. Simone was able to land quite a few shots. You, if you just look at when they're standing there and he's getting his hand raised, he's got a lot of damage on the face. Um, is Jose Aldo that knockout guy at this point? No. Um, but credit to Aldo. Um, we last saw him in 2022. He tries to go and do some boxing and quickly realizes there is no money in, mm-hmm. in some of these, unless you're fighting Jake Paul comes back and just puts on what a veteran performance against Jonathan Martinez. That's the definition of a veteran performance. That was one of my favorite fights of the year. It, it was, that was a great it, fight. Martinez was just, he didn't have a chance going mm-hmm. in there. Um, so I have a different way to look at this fight. Jim, uh, because I don't want to, I don't want to play Aldo. Um, take this fight to go the distance, and I take it very confidently. Aldo's like defense, Aldo's defense is just second to none. At mm-hmm. like at this point, he's seen everything. You're, Mario Batista is not going to bring anything uh, to, that uh, that Aldo hasn't seen. Um, I thought Aldo's hand speed looked great, and Aldo is a point fighter. 
at this point. He's not knocking anybody out these days. So I'm going to stay away from picking Aldo. But, man, this fight to go the distance, I just love, love, love. That's the only way I can bet this fight. I agree. I agree. I was thinking that distance. Uh, you know, what's the uh, – I'm assuming it's going to be a two-and-a-half. So if it's a playable line at two-and-a-half just to take that last half round out because we're at altitude, I'd be okay. fine playing that too as well. Uh, okay. You know, I, I don't think Batista is going to get caught by some kind of murderous shot by Aldo. And Aldo has to reserve his gas tank. Let's not forget – He's not the same guy that can go for five rounds. He's just True. not. And he doesn't fight that way. In the third, it's all about winning points. Yeah. So yeah, yeah I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna agree with you there. I think fight goes the distance is pretty darn good. All right. Uh man, oh, it's minus two eighty to go the distance. Boy, the books are damn. Books are mm-hmm. thinking the same thing we are. I should have looked it up before we started recording. I I thought I thought I'd be way out ahead of this one, but uh, the books have it's, it, look, it's far layable. You want to take another fight to start round two or, yeah, or no distance yeah. or you know, throw an NFL, you know, uh, plus money play or uh, plus points playing. You can yeah. figure out a way to play. I think it's worth playing somehow. All right. All right. Raquel Pennington and Juliana Pena in the co-main. What's your uh, initial reads on this one? This is one of the most cringeworthy, cringeworthy pre-lead up to the fight. Uh, moments yeah. for Pena. This is worse than when she fought Nunez because at least there was a reason for her to talk some smack. I feel like she's drumming up drama out of nowhere that doesn't exist just to try to sell ratings. Uh, she has become the Colby Covington of the women's division where, oh, let's face wow. facts, she's not wow. that good, okay? She's not a good fighter. And I feel very strongly about this. I've always felt that Juliana Pena was not a good fighter. Uh, loses to Jermaine Duran to me. That's a step up in competition. Beats Sarah McMahon. I think that was, was, was that the last fight for Sarah McMahon? In yeah, Sarah UFC? McMahon's over in Bellator. Right? So she left after that. She looks horrible in Bellator. She's also way older with no striking. Um, she just I'm got just, grounded and pounded out by Leah McCourt. So. Don't remind me. <laughs> Twice yeah. Liam McCourt got me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so I, I think she's one of the most overrated, and uh, she's popular because of her fight with Amanda, um, if you can call it a fight. The second time they ran that back and Amanda was serious, it wasn't even close. It was not even close. It was as bad as when Amanda fought, uh, who's the girl that's the commentator now, the tall one? I mean, um, I mean, I mean, Amanda has done that. To I can go down and cyborg. Megan uh, Anderson. <laughs> oh, Anderson. Okay, Megan it Anderson. It was that yeah. bad. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, so, I, Pennington's been really quiet about this. There is a little bit of bad blood apparently between the two of these from the Ultimate Fighter. Another Ultimate Fighter rematch. Uh, I love the fact that Pennington is just mouth shut. Just going to work with her lunch pail every day like she's done her whole career. Uh, her and Tisha are both fighting on the same card, training together. You have to think that they have somebody there watching the baby. Like, if there's no you got to do this, I got to do this. They have to be locked in. Um, you, s- you sneaky son of a bitch, you're going to pull out the Pennington parlay. I know where you're going with I, this. I like the Pennington parlay. I think it's a, a tricky way to, to, to pull a unit on this uh, card. I think Raquel is going to make this look easy. Pena is going to look good in the first and be going after takedowns. But we've seen this with Raquel. Once she knows that she is getting the cardio advantage, which she will have, she pours it on. She's great, great takedown defense, great get-up game. I think she's going to put it on Pena in rounds four and five. And Pena's not – Pena's going to be a bloody mess by the end of this fight if it doesn't end early. So the poll I mentioned earlier was I, – I, I asked on Twitter, if you handicap UFC, how much stock do you put in her win against Emmanuel Nunez? And there were two options. One was a ton. Two was none, fixed fight. Fixed fight, 
runaway favorite. <laughs> uh, well over 65%, I believe. I, I know it was over 60%. I don't know if it made up 65%. Uh, yes, I will continue to say that was a, that was – the second worst fixed fight I've watched since uh, watching uh, UFC with obviously the Derek Minner fight, which probably mm, was, yes. was, was, was openly fixed. At least Derek Minner was open about it. <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, Amanda Nunez <laughs> taps before the submission goes in. Uh, she's smiling when she gets up. Uh, it's a complete farce. Uh, and then yes, Amanda Nunez. I thought I thought she just played with her food. I thought she could have finished Pena and was like, no, yeah. you're going to sit here and get your ass kicked for five rounds. Uh, so yeah, let's go down Pena's wins. Sarah McMahon, who's losing in Bellator. Uh, <laughs> Nico Montano, uh, let's Could see how she, she's doing. How many well, times she did she miss weight? Yeah, she hasn't fought <laughs> since 2019. Okay, so that's whatever win. Loses to Shevchenko. Kat Zingano we're having to go back to. Uh, mm-hmm. Kat's getting uh, her ass kicked by, uh, by Cyborg over there in Bellator. Jessica I. We have to go back to um, look at the <laughs> like. This is who Juliana Pena has been beating. I don't even remember her. I, it wasn't I, I tr- good. Yeah, you, you think? It wasn't good. <laughs> you think? Mm. Look at all these. Yeah. Um, I, like, who has she beaten? It, it, it's it's amazing. Like like I've never seen a. It's, it's Amanda Nunes and nobody. That's what I mean. It's Nobody. it's crazy. Mm-hmm. It's it and and then when you just go look at all of the like the the nobodies that she's been to think she could submit Amanda Nunez is so laughable. Um so yeah, it's Raquel Pennington. Uh Pennington's last fight against Meyer Buena Silva. That was just the classic Pennington and classic Silva too, by the way, where Silva looks good early and then just quits. Mm-hmm. Uh, Pennington wears her down, just Myra Silva, you know, just Kind of gives up. Um, so, yeah, it's Pennington, and I, I, do, I don't mind the Pennington parlay. Uh, it's women's MMA, so you always got to be a little bit careful, but I'm just not impressed with Pena. You, you mentioned Pena like being the Colby Covington. I, so Colby Covington, it, it's an interesting one. I think Pena's worse. You She's not even entertaining. Her her career is going to be summed up as the same as Matt Serra's. Matt Serra knocks out GSP. Mm. Is that, I mean, uh, uh, put a comment down if you remember uh, in the chat. I remember. After, do you remember what Matt Sarah did after GSP got his belt back? No. Exactly. Oh, good point. I I know I know he's done what some shows and some podcasts and he's put on a bunch of. No, I mean fight stuff. wise, fight wise. Oh, like, fight it was wise. Kind of no. like okay, that was I did my thing. I won the title. I lost yeah. the rematch. It didn't go well. Like whoever he played, he didn't win a bunch of fights. Yeah, in that's a good point. Um, good so point. I think Pena had her. Pena had a moment in the sun, man. It's, yeah. it's kind of over. Yeah, and by the way, like when you when when you go all in on trying to be the bad guy in the heel, look where Colby Covington is right now. Yep. It doesn't end well, and Pena uh, doesn't look like this. This is going to end well for her either, because if she if she gets beat up real bad again, you're not going to know what to do with her. So side note: then, her family from Venezuela is attending this fight, which they haven't been able to do. Oh, able to go to her fight, so. Okay. That's a fade for me as well. <laughs> Love it. Love it. All right, main event time. Alex, uh, Khalil, Roundtree. If you haven't hit the like button and the subscribe, go ahead and make sure you do that now. Um, leave the uh, comment section. Tell us your best bet. Or if you just want to help us out, you don't have a hot take, just type the word cord, C-O-R-D, down in the comment section. It really helps us out. Um, I haven't. Really heard anybody make the case for Roundtree, yet the line is still kind of holding strong there at minus 500. Is this a don't overthink it? Um, or is there uh, is there something to brew in here in this fight? What do you think? It's a lot of activity for Alex. It's been a lot of activity for Alex. And we see this not, in all sports. Not yeah. only has it been I, – I, I didn't mean to cut you off – not only has it been a lot of activity, it's been him saving the UFC. Short he notice. has saved yep. mm-hmm. main events. Like, absolutely Call, saved the them. Cards. <laughs> what was, what was <laughs> the one that lost, like, four fights? Or, like, Alex. Is that what he fought Yuri, I think? Well, the Jamal, oh, Jamal Hill. Yeah. The Jamal yeah. Hill. You know, they, they pulled that yeah. out of their ass. And then, yeah, the, yeah, Yuri, of course. 
it just, now he, it's, it's a lot, man. It's a lot of training time. It's a lot of wear and tear on a career that already has a lot of wear and tear. So uh, let's sum it up. Is, is Alex Pereira better than Khalil Roundtree? I don't think we're debating that, right? Nobody's debating that. Yes, he's better. Um, the one thing Khalil has is speed. And we have speed. You can create power. And look, it's still only going to take one shot. Let's, let's put it this way. Who hits harder? Roundtree or Izzy? Oh, man. Oh, man. Um, for one punch, Izzy hit harder. <laughs> the, one, one the one magical punch, which I still say it's one of the most... Maybe the most <laughs> iconic punches I I will always remember mm-hmm. where the where Izzy summoned all of his strength and strength from the gods to just yeah. absolutely flatline Pereira. But I think Roundtree, pound for pound, Roundtree hits harder. So hits harder. If Izzy could touch Alex's chin, if Roundtree touches Alex's chin, he can put him out. Let's not even debate this, okay? It can happen. Same thing, if Alex touches Roundtree, he can put him out. We already know that. So you have, I mean, ammunition coming into this octagon that we haven't seen in a fight in a while. Like, name the last fight where both guys were so live for the knockout. Like, mm. uh, they're going to go across the cage and they're going to they're gonna have a Muay Thai fight. That, that's what's going to happen. Um, so, yeah, I lean Pereira. I, I don't like the number. I think... What's the line on this fight just to end by knockout? It's it's got to be. I I don't I don't think you're getting any. There's no big discount even there. No, no, um, it's, it's it's not. You know, you're not. I mean, so Pereira by knockout is minus three thirty. Roundtree by knockout's five to one. So I mean, at that point, even those two numbers, you have to bet Roundtree. You're not going to bet Pereira at that number. Um, yeah. So I think the, the the fact of the matter is is that somebody's going to get caught in this fight. Uh, okay. I would say within two rounds. Would not be surprised if it's really early. Um, if you're round three, you're going for broke. You're not interested in making this a five-round fight. You're going in and you're going for it. So, uh, yeah, I would like this fight to end. Other than that, I, I don't think you can play Pereira at the number. Um, if I have to pick a side, I'm going to lean towards the champion and say you can win, but round three most certainly has a puncher's chance, if not more, in this fight. Um, I would like to bring up Khalil Roundtree's uh, last few opponents here. Uh, old Anthony Smith and Chris Dawkins. Mm-hmm. Now I would like to bring up uh, Alex Pereira's last few opponents here, <laughs> and we'll see if we notice anything different. Yuri Prohoshka, Jamal Hill, Yuri Prohoshka, Jan Blakovich, <laughs> Adesanya, Adesanya Strickland. It's kind of laughable um, when yeah. you look at these. Um, I, I I agree with you about Alex Bear. Like, when it, what is too much here? But he's mm-hmm. been pretty open about let's get as many fights in at this level as possible because uh, I'm I'm not going to be at this level for mm-hmm. very long. So I don't want to take a bunch of time off. And you know, he kind of he keeps active. It's a big cage. It's um, I mean, I, I do worry about Pereira's cardio, but like you said, that's not like Roundtree. He's known for his amazing cardio, to, you know, going deep, you know, deep into fights and a couple leg kicks from Pereira and Roundtree's legs are going to hurt. And you're right. Roundtree's, if Roundtree hangs around long enough, to, if Roundtree keeps it on the feet, if I think eventually Pereira gets to him. So I agree mm-hmm. that Roundtree's probably going to, Probably gonna want to try and end it early. And here's the thing: like, yeah, if Roundtree wants to circle around and try and move, he's gonna get exhausted yeah, in that in that altitude. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I don't think that 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 plan of attack of really trying to dance around on the outside, I think that's eventually gonna get you finished. So I think Roundtree's just got to make it a absolute brawl. Go in, just try yep. and try and get to his chin before he gets to you, and just. Say hey, you knock me out, you knock me out. But I mean, early, like first thirty seconds. That's what I mean. Be, like fly early. in there, fly <laughs> yeah. in there. Um. So, yeah, maybe you could take the fight to end in round one. I, I'm just struggling to find the value on it, mm-hmm. and I don't know the the Saint Denis fight. Just uh, it, it, this was the very same thing. I did. I didn't know one person that was on Moicano, mm-hmm. and I certainly didn't know anyone that was on Moicano by complete ass kicking. Um, so, 
Um, to, yeah, take that for a grain of salt. I just think there's better opportunities on the card just with the value mm -hmm. of the, the plays and stuff. So um, we've used two of our keywords that uh, we hate. Um, yes. <laughs> value and, sh and, and sharp money. Uh, those are two <laughs> words that we hate. I wish they'd be banned from the uh, betting industry because everyone thinks they know what they mean. Um, and really they don't mean. So value is just another word for um, I lost a bet, but I feel better about it. Uh, and, and sharp, <laughs> sharp just means I'm betting something that nobody else is. That's yes. all that that means. <laughs> so, all right, let's do the parlay buster and the woulda, coulda, shoulda. Uh, the parlay buster is one that's going to bust everyone parlays. I already brought it up. I think it's Buckley. Just a sneaky recipe for Thompson to just get his hand raised and everyone's just tearing up their Buckley tickets. Just mm -hmm. what happened? So for me, it's uh, for me, it's a uh, walking Buckley. What's yours? I'm going to go with, well, Alex Hernandez is a favorite, right? Against Hubbard. Yeah, he's a pretty big favorite. He's like minus Yeah, I'm going to go with Hernandez. I think okay. You're, you're feeling good on Hernandez in round one, and then late round two, you don't know who won in round three. You're like, oh, shit. And then you okay. have to bet, you know, minus 180 on Hubbard to try to recoup some yeah. losses. Yeah. <laughs> All right, and the woulda, coulda, shoulda, this is a bet that we all just regret that we didn't hammer at the mm -hmm. end of the night. So um, some good options here on this one. What's one that's a, what's a reasonable bet um, that you're just like, man, why didn't we hammer that one? What, what's yours? Oh, I'm, I already got my so – I'm going to go with Cesar Almeida by knockout. <laughs> by, oh, excuse me, by finish. By, by finish, finish, yep. Just okay. like, okay, it's not a bet on Caesar. It's a bet against the or at altitude. Like, yeah. why didn't we hammer that one? There's no way he's going through with this guy. Oh, uh, that's such a, that's a really, really good one. Um, I'm going to go with Tisha Pennington. How many times do we get two fade theories in one fighter? You get to fade the baby and the fade the retirement. I think when uh, Spars is stating there, uh, giving her retirement speech and Pennington's walking off with a unanimous decision, that uh, we're like, man, why that the writing was on the wall in that one. So, <laughs> all right, that is going to do it for us, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. Don't forget to grab that college football best bet and to grab our UFC 307 pack, 19 and 9 MMA run. These are two sports that have just been very, very good to us. If you want to grab a three day pass on Thursday or Friday, don't forget there's a Formula One race as well. So, mm -hmm. we will definitely be in action in Formula One. So, uh, thanks so much, everyone. Don't be a stranger. Leave us a comment. Don't forget to join the Discord if you want to keep in communication with this great channel with a lot of good information, a lot of free bets, a lot of live bets as well. And we will be live on the Winning in the Shadows YouTube channel for UFC 307. We're going to watch all the fights, a lot of in-fight wagers. And I, I, I really got to stress this, guys, that if you're still watching this, thank you. These live shows, not only are they fun, they're a necessity for your bankroll. And, yes, I said necessity. We hit, like, what, two plays easily just by watching live on Contender Series. That's three, four units that just, bang, got added to your bankroll. Our live bets have been really, really good, and you only need one of them to really mm -hmm. justify it, you know, to, to justify watching the show. So we have a lot of fun, but most importantly, it is profitable, and Tuesday night was pretty, pretty good example of that. So, all right, Jim, great you guys work. Gotta do, you guys got to do what we do, Okay. We spend time with the wives. We do our thing. We do our chores and say, look, from 6 to 10, 6 to 12, I'm working. Because <laughs> that's where you're going to treat your bankroll, okay? It's an investment. Yes, absolutely. We can have fun while, while making money, but it is important uh, to get those live bets in. So, All right, good luck on all your plays, and we'll see everyone later. See you guys then.